Switching from one LM provider such as OpenAI to another like Google can be a technical nightmare if you are too dependent on the particular SDK that the provider is using. So one way to fight this is to create internal abstractions over their API or another one is to use a library such as white LM that abstracts away the differences between the different LM providers. Hey everyone, my name is Venelin, and in this video we're going to have a look at White LOM, the library that allows you to connect to multiple LOM providers. This library is very different compared to something like Open Router that allows you to call an API and get the response from different LOM providers. White LOM is a library or an SDK that you integrate within your software stack and you use it essentially as a local library. It gives you a complete abstracted interface towards pretty much every available LM providers, including uh, Olama. So if you want to work with local LMs and switch from time to time to some of the providers, then you can do that. With this library, you can also get a completely unified way to do function calling or tool calling and get structured outputs. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up the library, how you can call different LM providers, how you can get structured output in the way of using pedantic objects. And then we're going to do a quick demo on how you can do tool calling. Let's get started. If you want to become better AI engineer, you can go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. There you can find a complete AI bootcamp that starts from the basics of learning Python, classical machine learning and statistics, then going through a complete deployment of a machine learning pipeline then you're going to go and learn about LMs, how you can prompt them how you can call tools functions how you can build complete rack applications and CACs. also you're going to be learning how you can build agentic systems eight uh, github projects that are also available for ml expert pro subscribers so if you want to become a better ai engineer today go and subscribe to ml expert pro Thank you. I have a Jupyter notebook opened in my cursor instance. Here you can see the main dependencies that we are going to be using. The light LM library, pedantic and numpy doc. This one is going to be used to parse the doc strings from the tool that we're going to be defining later on. Then you can see the dependencies that I'm going to be importing. And uh, the thing here is that I'm going to be showing you how you can call both OpenAI and uh, Google's Gemini models. So uh, here I'm going to be using a dot time to load my keys for OpenAI key and Gemini API key. Here will be the test prompt defined what is deep learning in one sentence. And I'm going to be using this list of dictionary with a simple prompt that we have defined. This is very similar to what you might have within your OpenAI SDK. So in order to do a completion test, I'm going to be using the completion function from white LM. Here you're going to be providing your model name. Uh, this by default uh, goes through OpenAI models. As you can see here, I'm specifying GPT 4.1 mini and I'm passing the messages. So this will give you a response. As you can see, this is very similar to using the OpenAI SDK. If you go through the response itself, you can see that it is typed as a model response. And here you can see the model that you have used to do the completion, the different choices of the completions. If you wanted to do more than one completion, that is also available. And here you can see the message itself. This is the response from the model. We're going to see it in a bit. And then you have a detailed breakdown of the usage, completion tokens, prompt tokens, and the number of total tokens. Also, you can see here if you have some additional details such as cash tokens, uh, as you can, uh, pro as you probably already know, pretty much all of the LM providers nowadays allow you to cash your prompts and this save on your uh, bills essentially. So. Looking at the response usage, you can uh, get a detailed look over here or you can just get the message content from the response. 
And here you can see the response from GPT uh, 4.1 Mini. Deep Learning is a subset of machine learning that uses multi-layered neural networks to automatically learn hierarchical representations from large amounts of data. Okay, pretty good response. Then uh, Google have released their stable Gemini 2.5 models in the name of Pro and Flash. Uh, here you can see that I'm calling the 2.5 Flash model and we have a sort of namespace or a prefix for these models uh, with the name of Gemini right here. I'm passing in the same messages and I'm adding an additional parameter since this is a thinking or a reasoning model. So for this example, I don't want to have any thinking uh, associated with this request. And you can see that the interface is exactly the same, which is the powerful thing about this library. And you can go through the response itself. It is pretty much the same. And you can see that we are getting this response. Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses neural networks with multiple layers to learn complex patterns from data. Okay, I would say slightly better response here from uh, 2.5 Flash. But let's continue with the structured output example. One very important thing that I wanted to mention is that you can use such a library such as white LM when you're doing uh, internal evaluations of the different models, or you can use this as a fallback. So for example, if OpenAI's API is down or it is too slow for some of your requests, you can use a library such as white LM to provide fallback for the requests and you can essentially fill in the requests that are failing with, uh, for example, Gemini or Anthropic models until OpenAI models are back online. So the next thing that is a pretty common practice to use when working with LMs is the structured output. So in this case, I would like to get a response in the form of this uh, pedantic model. I want to do some sentiment classification with the possible options of negative, neutral or positive, and I want the model to provide me with the reasoning of why this sentiment has been chosen. So here is the very simple prompt that I'm going to be using. Classify the text sentiment into one of negative, neutral or positive. Give your reasoning in the reasoning field. This is a common practice. Uh, in the way that I'm going to be using this reasoning field as a sort of a thinking tool, if you will. So next here, you're going to be passing in the text. I'm very happy to say that AI has taken my job for good. Well, uh, we'll see uh, what the sentiment of this is going to be. And I'm going to be doing pretty much exactly the same completion. And I'm going to be passing in the response format with this pedantic uh, model that we have created. This took a bit more time uh, to complete, but if you look at the response, you see that it is just a JSON string uh, properly formatted and you can get your sentiment classification model itself with model validate JSON, which is coming from the pedantic library, passing in the JSON content and you can see that you got the sentiment classification model. So here you can see the reasoning, the text explicitly uh, and the sentiment classified as positive. The text explicitly states that I'm very happy to say that AI has taken my job for good. The phrase very happy classify indicates a positive emotion and for good implies a beneficial and permanent change, reinforcing the positive sentiment. Okay, so probably the model didn't get the irony here but uh, let's say that this is good enough for us as of now. So the next more important thing than structured outputs is actually tool calling. Modern AOMs are more than not used in workflows and agentic systems. So in order to work with those, you are going to be providing a different tools or set of functions that your models can work with. And in this case, I have created this very simple function, estimate house price. Uh, you're going to be passing three different parameters, the square meters of the house, the number of bedrooms, and whether or not this is in expensive location, which can be subjective. And we're going to be using the LOM in order to uh, provide this uh, parameter for us. So uh, you can see that I have very detailed 
uh, description of what this function does and what the parameters are. This is going to be useful to the AOM uh, to call this function properly. And the implementation is a very dummy one. I have just multiplied the square meters, the number of bedrooms, and whether or not this is an expensive location. So how do you use a white AOM to call this tool? First thing that you need to do is to call this function to dict, and this will create a list of tools for us. Then you're going to be adding the prompt. Uh, this is going to be provided by the user. I'm looking at a three bedroom house at San Jose. It's about 250 square meters. How much should I get it for? And then uh, you're going to be adding a prompt here to the messages. And the important thing here is that you're going to be specifying the list of tools and the tool choice is going to be set to auto. So what the tools look like, you can see here that uh, essentially you get the description get house price estimate in USD, square meters, this is an integer, and square meters of the house, number of bedrooms. Uh, you can see that those are taken here from these parameters. And then you get the expensive vocation type boolean. I'm not really sure why it didn't get the, maybe because I did add these semicolons, not really sure, but it didn't got correctly the description of this parameter. So this is what the AOM is going to get uh, for the description of this function. And if you call the AOM with this, you get essentially this tool call, which allows you to call the function with the arguments of expensive location equal to true, number of bedrooms equal to three, and square meters equal to 250. And the name of the function that the AOM wants you to call is the estimate house price. So this looks uh, pretty good. And in order to do the tool calling itself, you're going to get the messages added to the uh, list of messages that we have. Then we're going to get the two calls, which is going to be uh, this uh, argument here. And then the available functions, we're going to be creating this dictionary, which uh, currently has only just our single function. So for the actual two call, I'm going to be iterating over the two calls since the LOM can give you a list of two calls that you need to call. And even though in our case, this is just one, uh, I'm going to be using this loop to go through the uh, available functions. And then you're going to get the function name from here, the available function. So you're going to essentially match the function name with the available functions. Uh, then you're going to get a function arguments from JSON. Uh, this is going to take this, these arguments JSON right here. And I'm going to be using the double star prepend to the function arguments in order to call the function uh, to for the response. Then I'm going to be adding a message with the two call ID, the two, the name of the function, and then the response. And to look at the complete response that the final AOM call, call is going to get, uh, we're going to see that this is the two call ID, which should match this one right here. Then uh, this is the row of the tool, the function, and this is the final response. Note that you need to return this response as a string, otherwise the library is going to be having issues with parsing that. Even though this is an integer, uh, this is a good place to convert everything to a string. And then uh, I'm going to be creating this final call to the model. And this is the actual final response that you are going to be giving to your users. For a three bedroom house of 250 square meters in San Jose, you should expect to pay around 650,000 US dollars. So this used the tool and then based on the tool response, it has provided this response for us. So this is it for this video. We've seen the white AOM library in action and how you can use it in order to call different AOM providers. For example, you can use OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, Owama and other providers in order to get an unified or abstracted interface to all of the available AOM providers. We've seen how you can get structured outputs and how you can do 
to calling or function calling with the different L1 providers as well. We've seen that the library integrates very well with Pedantic and you can use it in order to get a unified experience when calling different LMs. This will be very useful when you're doing LM evaluations or falling back to different providers once a particular one is offline. So thank you for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Also, go and subscribe to IMAX Pro to become a better AI engineer today. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.